Mr. Buchanan, you say this is the third time a woman has claimed you are a child's father. The first two times, DNA testing proved you were not the father. And you now doubt your girlfriend, Miss Stembridge's six-month-old daughter, is yours. Yes, Your Honor. You state she is engaged in sexual affairs outside of the relationship, including with your former friend and roommate. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Miss Stembridge, you argue that you've always been upfront and honest with Mr. Buchanan. Yes, Your Honor. You say his roommate made up the whole story of you sleeping with him. And furthermore, you claim Mr. Buchanan has a history of women lying to him, so now he trusts nobody, especially you. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Buchanan, what specifically has led you to believe Ms. Stembridge has been unfaithful? Uh, basically, uh, me and Eric got in some confrontation uh, one day. This is like... And Eric is your... Supposable best friend. Supposed best friend, so yeah. you get into a confrontation. Yeah, we was actually at a store. Uh, we took Eric up to the store. He was in the backseat already drunk. Jessica went in to go get his beer, which, I mean, why are you getting him beer? You know what I'm saying? He could have got it himself, Your Honor. <laughs> Well, you went in there You're to get it. You went, in, you went in there to get it for him, so. You got it. So, so you I mean, to an friend. argument over the beer? Okay, so you're best friends with him then, obviously, if you went in there. But, anyways, um, we was in, we, you know, me and Eric was in the car while she in there getting his beer. Um, and this was actually the day after um, I was under, you know, incarcerated in a jail under false pretenses. They had the wrong person. Um, and while we was in the car, he had bought some food and. I said, you know, I was eating it, and he was like, why are you eating all my food? And I'm like, I don't care. So I threw it in the back seat at him, and he's like, you know, I'm your girl while oh, you're locked oh, up. Oh. Wait, I know it's a direct quote, but we got to watch our language in the court, so we got to abbreviate. But basically, he said, that's why I sleep with your girl while you're locked up. Okay, that wasn't exactly the news you wanted to hear, right? Not, not really, no. No, and who, I mean, who wants to hear that? You know what right. I'm saying? All right, and I'm, I'm going to take that serious. You know, I'm a serious kind of guy, you know? I expect people to be up front with me. <laughs> Okay? Um, so basically, you know, I threw the chips at him or whatever I was eating, you know, told him whatever, you just, you full of lies, you know what I'm saying? I put my faith into this woman, you know? Um, you know I've been taking care of her and stuff. And to go back before this, now, when I got locked up under false pretenses, okay? <laughs> check this out, all right? I'm I'm, not, you, you notice I'm not even going there. I'm not <laughs> even gonna ask a question about these false pretenses. Keep going. She come to see me. You know, and told me that, you know, they, she was under a lot of stress when I was locked up, you know, and, you know, her and Eric had a few beers while I was locked up, which is breaking the brother code, all uh -huh. right? You don't drink. I don't care. I don't care if it's a supermodel. You ain't drinking with somebody that's supposed to be my best friend. You know, you had the right to say no, all right? If so you're blaming Miss Stembridge or are you blaming your best friend? I'm blaming her because she knew better. She knew better. He was single. I don't blame him for nothing. Single man, do whatever you want. You should right? let me get you out She's of jail. She's with somebody. She's with somebody, all right? So when you're with somebody, you're supposed to be devoted to that. Exactly. You sure all are, right? but you ain't thinking about it. Right? Are you trying to sleep with talk, other women? She ain't talking to you right now. We're telling this right now from this side, talking, all right? I'm talking to you. All right, check this out, all right? <laughs> so they had a few beers, all right? She was honest about that on my visitation day. I was cool with that. I threw that out the window, all right? Cool. You had a few beers, I can understand. Your nerves were bad. That's cool. I understand that. All right? But then, check this out. All right? She check kinda, it out. I'm she, checking. She kind of picked, she kind of picked me up. She kind of picked me up. All right? We get home, or we, we on the way home, and I'm looking at them. They both nervous. All right? They both nervous, shaking, looking scared, like they about to get beat. All right? We're so no I get, so I get home, I get home, which we were staying with Eric. All right? We're staying with Eric. All right? So I walk in there. What do I see? Lemon drops. Lemon drops. Lemon drops laid out. Hey, bro, I, I, ain't talking, I, ain't talking, I ain't talking about two no candy. Shot I ain't talking about no candy. I ain't talking about no candy. Look, she already knows. Look, I ain't there talking about no two candy. two shot glasses laying on the table. When you walked in and you saw the drinks out, in your mind, you thought she's drinking with him again, and she said that was only a one-time thing. Okay, check it out. She told me about the beer, so when you picked me up, why didn't you fair warn me about the liquor before I got home? Why are you gonna let me find that out by myself? Because you forgot. Because you forgot. I didn't forget too you much. Forgot. It was still there, weren't it? I didn't forget okay. too much. First, the best friend tells you he slept with your girl. Then you go home and you see that they've been partying together again. 
He, he couldn't get laid off a of beer, so he's gonna try to go to liquor. All right. And check this out. That's check this out. Work. Check this out. All right. First, first day we got together. You know what we drank? What? Let me drop. All right. Hey. I didn't want you to say that. You know what that. I got? You know what I got that night after I drank lemon drops with her? I don't want to know. All right. So what do you think Eric got when they drank lemon this drops guy the first is time? Weird. So wait a minute, Mr. Buchanan. So. You're basically saying that these lemon drops are an aphrodisiac for your girlfriend. Oh, yeah. So you don't need her to be drinking lemon drops with anybody but you. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, okay. But check, but check this out, all right? Okay, so I get back. I get out of jail, all right? And I get back. Who, who calls me? I get a phone call from my ex, all right? My ex is who I was dating before her. All right, I get a phone call. I'm like, yeah, what's up? Okay. Oh, oh, I need to check my girl? Why I need to check my girl? Nah, you need to check your girl. She was laid up in your best friend's bed while you were locked up, laid up there sideways in some booty shorts and a, and a spaghetti strap. What? Your Honor, no, wait, you're, wait a minute, and you short. have a witness to that? They're not yeah. that short, Your Honor. <laughs> They're not that short. Hey, hey when I'll you put can them see, on right now, Your Honor. When you can see the McDonald's talking, arches or the booty, booty line, you can't that's see booty that. shorts. You cannot see no booty line. Eric's not here. Not you ain't got shorts. nobody in the press right now. No. Wait a minute. I, I want to hear from this witness that says she saw this incident. Jerome, Ms. McNeil is outside. Can you please escort her in? Sure. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. This is a girl right here, all right? Had my what back you since. Mad for? Had my Why back. Why you mad, Jessica? Had my back Why? since day one. I ain't talking to you. Well, good. Had my back since day Look. one. Well, go be Ms. with her. Go go be with her. Come on, up to the podium, please. Now, Mr. Buchanan says that you witnessed firsthand yes, some did. very Disturbing. inappropriate behavior. Yep. That was not going on, Your Honor. What, what exactly did you witness? Did I witness when I walked in? When I walked in, she all I saw was in the air. Okay, let's on use, his let's bed, use better language in the bed. court. Let's I'm use sorry. better language in the court. You I'm walked sorry. in and saw what? Booty in the air. <laughs> Maybe the head, head of his bed. bed. Reflection out mirror. <laughs> Look, better come up and show me. Oh, you have a diagram here. <laughs> what did you see? I walked in. This is the the door to Eric's room. I walked in. Standing right there. Nope, that's a lie, Your Honor. Because I would have seen her. I ain't never seen this girl in my life. You ain't never seen me in your life. No, no, no. That's a lie. Pictures in his Look. phone. Look. Pictures in his phone. Head, head, yeah, in his phone. See, that's, that's right. wrong. I weren't even that's laying right. that way. I weren't even See, laying that like way. This? No. All I no, saw no, no, was no, no, booty. No, hold on, Miss Stembridge. Let me hear this. Now, Miss McNeil, what now? I come in to Eric's room to come pick something up. All I saw, her head towards his closet and booty in the air. No. A liquor bottle right here on the counter. I took a shot myself. <laughs> that was about. That's right. While you were at it. That's right. Hey, what was well, you drinking, Heather? What was you drinking? Lemon drop. Oh. I ain't never oh, had one. No. I ain't never had one, but they good. They're good. I drink them now. That's why he's telling but me that she up. tried to sleep I with him, I don't give too. it up. That's I did. She, that's I did. Josh, I don't have them okay. for you. Hold on now. Yeah. Hold on. So. It's your position that you were standing here at this point and you could easily see Miss Stembridge in a yeah. compromising position with another she man. She was standing right there, Your Honor, because I ain't never seen her the before in my life. Was if right she was standing here. right there, I would have seen her. You can't see me, y'all. You, you butt right got there. eyes. You weren't right butt there. Got eyes. You weren't right no. there. No, whatever. Go on. You Whatever. Yeah, you were not on. standing right there. Okay. You were not so standing there. Well, you that's said, that's was that's she ever... Hold on. Let's get some order. I'm trying to understand. Miss Stembridge, so you're saying you don't even, you have no recollection of her even being in the house. No, and this was during the daytime. Because she called, when... excuse me, she called Eric and said, hey, I'm coming over to pick something up. So why would I say, why would I be bending over to bed like that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because it took me maybe a little longer to get there and no, you had more than no, two shots. Maybe because she still wants That's him. Right. You don't remember. No, 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 no. Get your story Wasted. straight. Get your That's story right. straight. Thank you Wasted. so much. Get your story Wasted. straight. Uh, Ms. McNeil, you straight. may return to the podium. Thank you. Woo! That's right. All right. Wow. 
I've never, known, right. I've never known Heather to never come over to Eric's house and not come in his bedroom. That's right. Every time I, you know, when and I was dating her, she's I always came in his bedroom. I don't have to call to show up at Eric's house. But Ask him. Did. I don't, I won't you call. Uh, no. Yeah, I showed up one time and she was there. They wouldn't open the door. That's why she claimed the she ain't never seen me. Closed. And the door closed. The front door. They wouldn't let me in the house because you was well, in there. Hey, uh, Let's move on. Miss McNeil, you may take a seat. Thank you so much. All right. Wow. Let's fast forward to the pregnancy. I yeah. want to... Yeah. Two Deal weeks. with the issue at hand. All right, two weeks after all this went down, all right, we take a pregnancy test because just talking about she late. Late? Late or what? I ain't bleed. I'm late. All right, so we took a pregnancy test. <laughs> Boom. Pregnant. Positive. All right? Not like positive isn't like good job. Positive isn't like there's something growing in there. All right? <laughs> two weeks later. All right? That's why I'm denying that little girl, man. Because I'm going to tell you what, two weeks later and she's pregnant, we took three of them. They all came back saying there's something growing in there, all right? Look at that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm going to tell you what, I love that little girl all my heart. All right? I love that girl. I don't care if Eric is the dad. I'm the father. Financially, physically, mentally, I take care of that child. And I've been taking care of Jessica for the past 24 months, make sure we have a place to lay our head with that baby. All right. So you've been stepping up to the plate and doing the right thing. Oh, yeah. But you have doubts. Oh, yes. So it could be your baby or it could be your best friend. It could be ex. It could be probably some other people's that I don't know about. Mr. Buchanan, what are your hopes? Do you have any feeling that this could be your child? I hope that little girl's mine. Hopes are granted. She's yours. She she loves me to death, man. He's a great father. That, that baby that has to have me honor. every night to go to sleep. That baby will not go to sleep unless she has me laying in that bed with her. He is a great father. You have your tears honor. in your eyes as you speak about her. Yeah. That's my life. If she's not your biological daughter, what will you do? If it ain't mine, <laughs> she's going to she gonna have to get a good lawyer is all I got to say. Because I'm going to fight to take that child. Well, Jerome, hand me the envelope, please. Here you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> what are you be looking over here like that? Don't tell me where to look. You're the one lied to him, but yeah, that's you got right. his back. That's funny. That's right. that's that's funny. You you're the one that that's never that's had right. my you back. You wanted to come to Carolina with me. Have when a still, seat, Miss McNeil. When McNeil. you were still pregnant. Oh, he can go with you. Miss Denbridge, why are you even engaging back and forth? Because I believe you're about She's nothing. trying to ruin what me and him have. Because I but believe she's jealous. But the bottom line is, is if you stop talking and do a little bit more listening, you'll hear him say that he plans to take care of you and this child. If he does not that. look, 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 look. If All he's right. not. 24 months, I put you yeah. and that baby at six months underneath the roof. Yes, but look under what I'm having to deal with. You talk about moving with her, go move with her. You want her to have What are you right. talking about? That's what she just said. That's, that's what right. she just said. That's right. While I was pregnant, that's you were right. trying to move with her. You know what you yeah, said? Yeah, he was going to come get away See? from your crabby. For a little while. See, crabby? All right, okay. 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 Yeah, okay. So I can have a job to no. take care of you. No. Let's get some order. Let's get some order. Mr. Buchanan, you got to decide who you're in a relationship with. That's all I'm your worried girlfriend, about. Your really. girlfriend? Listen, your girlfriend or your ex. Now, the problem is this when the chips were down and you were confused and you didn't know what to believe, you had her to talk to and she could tell you what she maybe or maybe. Not saw, but as long as you have Ms. McNeil in your ear, you all going back and forth, and these two fighting against one another, it's ridiculous. Fairly. And if you all are arguing over lemon drops, that's unacceptable. That is irrelevant right now. If you don't want her drinking with your best friend, you all need to sit down as adults and set boundaries in your relationship as to what's acceptable and what's not. Because that's your rule. In some relationships, if someone had a drink with your best friend, it would be absolutely no big deal if you trusted both of them. 
Well, I You've just, got. I know she's got a pass of well, you know, doing some you've girl got gone wild, taking her top off when Ms. she gets drunk. Mr. So. Buchanan, Mr. Buchanan, you got to determine whether or not you have enough trust for this woman, enough trust for your best friend to have either or both of them in your life. Yeah. I think it's time for the results. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Buchanan versus Stembridge, when it comes to six-month-old Sophia, Mr. Buchanan, you are her father. Thank you. That's a blessing. Not enough money. Thank you. Not enough money. Thank you. They ran out of London. He, he must have did something. He must have did something when I already got it knocked up. Thank you. Yeah. They ran out of lemon. Are you already? Thank you. Thank it's you. It's obvious that you're happy and oh, you're yeah. pleased. Yeah. That's, yeah. I love that baby to death. I'm glad she's mine. That's, That's right. Good. She got a good father. Yep. <laughs> now the problem is this: you gotta step up now and politely tell Ms. McNeil to exit stage left. And you've got to decide whether you are going to be in a relationship and create a family, but you've got to determine whether or not you have enough trust for this woman, enough trust for your best friend to have either or both of them in your life. Yeah. Do it for your child so that you won't have these ridiculous misunderstandings going forward. Mr. Hardy, you are here to prove what you have always known, that you fathered the defendant's 26-year-old daughter, Taylor. You say your belief was proven to be true after Taylor learned another man was not her biological dad here in this courtroom. He come to me and asked me if he was her dad because she said her stepmother told her that he was not. How old were you then? Um, 12, 13. I've been there for her all her life. You've never had a doubt? Yeah. I've never had a doubt. Why do you question he's your daughter's father? He wasn't the only one I was sleeping with in order for me to get pregnant, to be with him. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jennings, you are not the father. Mr. Hardy, you say Ms. Lynn is a master manipulator who has stopped you from being a daddy to your little girl. Ms. Lynn, you claim the plaintiff is not Taylor's biological father, and you intend to prove that today. Is that correct? There's a possibility between him and one other person. All right. So, Mr. Hardy, you say you've always known you were Taylor's biological father? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me why. I was... Brandy and I was together at the time that Taylor was conceived. I was there as much as we could possibly be together, every chance we got to be together. Also, she has same color eyes, same color hair. Looks just like my oldest son. So, Ms. Lynn, let me understand first. The relationship between you and Mr. Hardy, when did it begin? I started seeing him off and on when I was 14, 15 years old. Okay. Mr. Hardy, take me to the day you found out Ms. Lynn was pregnant. The second time she told me she was pregnant, I doubted it because she had already said she was pregnant before. So, you were told she was pregnant before? Yes, but she wasn't pregnant that time. So I had my doubts the second time she told me she was pregnant. I didn't believe it until I, until I seen for myself that she was pregnant. Since you've always known this was your child, were you accompanying her? Was your family involved in the pregnancy? Were you there? Not no, at all. No, ma'am. Her parents did everything they could to keep us apart. From the time Taylor was around two to about nine years of age, I didn't get to see her. But around nine is when I got to start seeing her again. Whenever Brandy would let me see her. I, so you've always believed? Yes, ma'am. This was your biological daughter? Yes, ma'am. I was led to believe that she always knew. I was told that she did not, was not capable of handling the situation, did not want to deal with me. And then I found out that she had been told her whole life that I was not her father. 
And so, Ms. Lynn, did you tell him that she was not able to really process and understand the fact that... We he... talked about the possibility of talking to her about it when she was very young. And I did not think emotionally she could handle that much information at one time. And my ex-husband and I had already agreed to sit down and talk to her when she was 16, when she would have a better grasp of the concept of everything that was going on in the situation. So you were basically telling Mr. Hardy, hold tight. Right. Don't go bringing this up. Right now. Right. Taylor, I want to ask you, so all this time you're being raised by Mr. Jennings. Yes. And this is the man you believe is your biological father your whole life. Yes, Your Honor. So when you meet Mr. Hardy, it really means nothing to you. Yes, Your Honor. So how did you find out that he might be your biological father? It was Thanksgiving. I think it was right... Maybe I was 23, right around there. I had asked my mom because my boyfriend had... He had mentioned that I looked like him. She didn't want to talk about it, and she locked herself in her back room because Thanksgiving's not the time to talk about it, you know? And then so I was just like, well, I'm going to take it upon myself and get in touch with people that was her friends. And so you reached out to him, and you yes. submitted that message to the court. Yes. All right, let me see what this message says. Hey, Keith, I was searching on Facebook through my mom's old friends looking for my biological father. Do you know who he could be? Mr. Hardy responds, it's me. <laughs> you respond, what? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> so, Taylor, when you sent this message and you got that response, tell me in that moment what you felt like. Well, I felt like I could finally have closure with this search that, you know, I've been wanting to find since I was, like, 12 or 13. So... So, Mr. Hardy, when you got this message... Were you relieved, like, finally? I didn't have to come to her. She's come to me. At this point in time, I was led to believe that she knew that I was her father. Oh, really? Yes. And that she didn't want to... So deal when with you me. got the message, you were surprised that she was even in a search. Yes. And you're a damn lie. Because I have never once told you that she... I sat down and told her you were her father. <sighs> Not once. You disagree with that, Mr. Hardy? Yes, ma'am, I do. I was kept away from her. Brandy would move from place to place. There would be years at a time I wouldn't even know where to find her at. Oh, really? Yes. I made sure I called every year on her birthday. I sent her birthday cards to last known addresses. I called repeatedly. Brandy would get mad at me saying, the only reason you call here is to talk about Taylor. Do you remember the gifts on your birthday and the calls? Because there was none. The only birthday I remember that actually he was there, we went out and we did stuff. Who's we? Me and, and Keith. Mr. Hardy. You and Mr. Hardy went out. We went, we, yeah, we went How to the mall. How old were you? I think I was 23. Okay. We went to the mall. We went, you know, it was like just me and him. We went out. We ate. It was nice because even growing up, my parents never had one-on-one -on -one time with me ever. So it's like having one-on-one -one time with someone that could be, it, it meant a lot to me then, you know? Yes. Because after you were here previously and you learned that the man you believed to be your daddy was not your biological father... This moment in time, I could imagine, was filling up a lot of that void for you, just having that one-on-one -on -one time. Yes. And so, Miss Lynn, when you hear your daughter speak so beautifully about a day spent with Mr. Hardy, that just having that moment just meant the world to her, how does that make you feel? Because it is your assertion that there's a very real possibility that he is not her biological father. It hurts me for her because she grew up knowing the man I was married to as her father. And, you know, I hate it that he didn't spend that type of time with her. All I can do is make sure that she knows, regardless of what happens here or who raised her, she's my daughter and I love her. In your heart, you do know, wrong or right, you felt like this was well-intentioned. You were a young girl. Quite frankly... I made a lot of bad decisions for a lot of good reasons. We see that a lot here in this courtroom. And I just want to tell you in this moment, you're not alone. You're not the only one. Well, I appreciate that, because sometimes it feels like it. You explained in court previously that there was a man you loved, and that was George Jennings. Mm -hmm. And that you were doing anything you could at that time so that you could marry him. Yes. 
And one of the ways at, at your age at that time you could marry him was that you had to be pregnant. I was 15 years old. And you admitted that the first day you had sex with Mr. Jennings. Day two, Mr. Hardy. Next day and the next day, day three and four with Mr. Bryant. Because your doctor had given you a four-day window of conception. Yep. So there is another man who could very possibly be yes. your daughter's biological father. Yes. Taylor, how did you find out about him? Mr. Bryant. Uh, the last time I appeared here. In this courtroom? Yes. Then I asked her what his name was and I looked him up on Facebook. Who do you believe is your biological father? Uh, Keith. Mr. Hardy? Yes. Because you don't believe Mr. Bryant? Yes, I don't think I look like him. You don't think you look like him? Mm. You know him? I've met him twice since finding out he could be. And so, Ms. Lynn, you had informed Mr. Bryant that he was a possible father? Yes. So he knew this? Yes. So when you reached out to him, he already knew. Yeah, first thing he said was, are you my daughter? Oh, really? He came when I was seven months pregnant, wanted to have a DNA test done. My ex-husband refused. He came when she was four months old, sat down with us and tried to talk him into having a DNA test. And there again, my ex-husband refused. All right. Well, I'd like to hear from Mr. Bryant as well. And I'm going to ask Jerome to escort him into the courtroom. Sir. Okay. Let me go up to the witness stand right next to the judge. So, Mr. Bryant, thank you for joining us today. We are here discussing the paternity surrounding this beautiful young woman, Taylor. And uh, we've been told that you are a potential biological father. Do you believe you are her biological father? Yes, ma'am. You do? Wow. Tell the court why. Because she's got so much resemblance of my daughter. I've been believing it for 26 years. It's time to get it over with, you know? So, for 26 years, you've had this thought in your heart. Yes, ma'am. So, when is the first time, not your assertion that you potentially could be her biological father, but that either Ms. Lynn or someone else said to you, you know what, it is a very real possibility? When she was pregnant. Oh, take me to the day that you found that out. With, uh, standing at the kitchen sink, washing dishes. She told me she was pregnant and I could be the possibility of being a father. So, Mr. Bryant, what was that like, knowing and feeling like you have a daughter, being denied the access? 26 years is a long time. Wondering if she's mine or if she's not, yes. you know? Legally, you have no rights. Right. But on my second daughter and everything, I made that right. I got custody of her to the age of 18 to pull and sole custody of her from that point forward, you know? I, I raised five kids. I have never had a doubt, you know? Never doubted or never will. So, when you had your children, you made it a point to make sure you were on their birth certificates and were in their lives Even because of what you experienced with Taylor and believing that you were basically locked out of her life. Yeah, I pretty much bought my rights to the state. When you hear this, Taylor, how does it make you feel? I mean, sad, because, I mean, either one is and one's not. I mean, I don't want to hurt anyone. I just, I mean, I want to know the truth, but I don't want anyone to get hurt because of, because of me, you know? It's not because <laughs> of you, babe. No, that's not your fault. It's not right? because of that's you. That's my fault. <laughs> you don't take it's blame not just, for that, it's not just that's my fault. It's, it's their family and their kids and their parents. It's everyone. Somebody's going to get hurt. Some family is going to get hurt. <laughs> I want you to know in this moment, this is not your fault. This is something we're trying to solve for you. Your mother is correct. She says, you don't take responsibility for what I did. She's telling you. <laughs> this is my doing, not yours. And it's like, if we find out which one is, what if they decide they don't want to be there? What if I don't have a... Like, they know, but they don't care, you know? What if they don't want to be there at all? But don't you see that they wouldn't be here unless they cared? <laughs> That's what I want you to see. <laughs> I want you to see that you've gone from the last time when we were in this courtroom to finding out that the man you believe was your biological father was not, to having two other men that truthfully your entire life have loved you from afar, have thought about you, believe you were their biological daughter. And as, look, sometimes I always say you gotta find the magic in the mess, mm -hmm. right? This has been a messy saga that has gone on for 26 years.
But you've got two men in this courtroom with their eyes, love, attention focused on you. And that doesn't change no matter what the results say. Does it, gentlemen? No, right. oh, ma'am. So, Les, in this moment, I want you to know how blessed you really are and that this is nothing but a situation in life that we're going to hurdle over today with these results and we're going to give everyone the clarity they deserve. Miss Lynn, we're here and you have laid it all on the line. So I need to ask you, with all respect, are there any other possibilities in this moment? No. Okay. Absolutely none. I think it's time we get these results. Jerome? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Hardy versus Lynn, as it pertains to whether or not Mr. Bryant or Mr. Hardy is the biological father of 26-year-old Taylor Martini. It has been determined by this court. Taylor's biological father is Mr. Bryant. Yes! Yes, I told you! Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I give her a hug? Yes. Absolutely. Just to hug his daughter. Thank you. You can stand next to your okay. daughter if you like. Mr. Hardy, I want to check in on you. How are you in this moment? Are you all right? It's kind of surreal. Taylor, you look like you're almost in shock, sweetheart. Yes, are you okay? I am in shock, but I'm glad to get answers. What would you like to say to your mom in this moment? Um, I want to thank her for being honest and play, even though it hurt and she didn't want to come out here today, then she's, she's here and we got results and I have closure. <laughs> and what would you like to say to your dad? Something to make up for 26 years. Yeah. 